Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the attitude, an attitude matrix for an Euler angle rotation. I'm going to show in this video two different methods you can do this. And for this video, I'm going to show specifically a 1, 2, 3 Euler angle rotation. But of course, this can be done with all the different combinations of Euler angle rotations, including but not limited to a 3, 1, 3, a 3, 2, 1. A one, three, two. There's a bunch of different combinations, but for this one, I'm going to show a one, two, three. And my angle convention is roll pitch yaw denoted by a phi, theta, and psi. So, if you want to know more about the Euler angle rotations and what the attitude matrix means, you can look at all the resources, and I'll probably clear it up more. But basically. What it's what we're trying to attempt here is that you have your initial frame, which we're going to call B, and then you have your final frame, which we're going to call B triple prime. And what the attitude matrix does is that it can convert a, you know, whether it's angular velocity, velocity, position, acceleration in this initial body frame vector into the into the final frame, final reference frame. So let's say you just had some initial vector of you know R1, R2, R3, and this would be in the the body frame. So this would be in the body frame or the initial frame noted by the B. And but then but you want it you want this vector then in this, in this frame. So to do that, you need a transformation matrix or an attitude matrix in this case, which would be something denoted by this, which would be B into B triple prime. So this converts our B frame into our B triple prime frame. So we can multiply this, or this attitude matrix times this vector. So this is gonna be a three by three times a three by one. Multiply these together and you get a three by one in this frame. So that's what we're trying to do here. And these can be represented by, you know, different rotations with different, with your, with your angles. So. As we'll see, if I know all of these angles and I know which convention we're using, I can then quickly find this B triple prime frame or the rotation matrix from B to B triple prime. All right, so. All right, so we have a one, two, three rotation sequence. So the one means our first rotation is going to be about the first axis. So if this was a 3, 1, 3 rotation, this would be about the third axis. But because we're doing 1, 2, 3, this is about the first rotation about the first axis, rotating angle of phi, a roll value of phi. So now we want to represent our intermediate reference frame as a function of our initial reference frame. So our so our first immediate frame is going to be B prime. So our B1 prime is just the same as B, B1. Because we're rotating about that vector, or rotating about that axis, B1 prime just be represented as B1. But where it gets more complicated is that we have B2 prime. Now, how are we going to represent it as a function of B1, B2, B3? Well, it's not a function of B1 at all because it's perpendicular to this, to this line right here. So there's no component of B2 prime that's along B1. So there is no B1 here. But the component of B2 prime along B2 can be represented as cosine phi. So you take this component of B2 prime, 
along B2, and it's just cosine B2. Now, the component of B2 prime along B3 will be sine phi phi along B3. That's, this is a pretty simple one here. So this component is just like this, and then the other component is just like that. So now we got B3 prime. Now the component along B3 prime, this one is a little bit more tricky. So if so you want to find the component of B3 prime along B2, okay? So we got B3 prime pointing in this direction. So to take that horizontal component, we need to take sine, the opposite angle. But that is then pointing this way in the B2 direction. So it needs to be represented as negative sine V B2. Now the B3 prime vector along B3 can just easily be represented as cosine phi because take the component along B3 of B3 prime, it's just cosine phi. So these are all our B prime frame as a function of B1 prime or B prime or our B frame, which can be represented as this rotation matrix, which is B, this is B2 B prime and this is our rotation matrix, can be represented as this. We've got one cosine phi, sine phi, negative sine phi, cosine phi. All right, so our next rotation. So let's say, Bob, well, first, okay, so this is our first rotation around angle, or our frame, or the axis one. Now, if this was a two, one, three, sequence so this one would be around one so this form still takes the same thing the only thing that's changing is these kind of variables here and the variables here so if this was a so if this was like a two one three so this would be our rotation about the one axis and then it would look like similar to this this format and our rotation would be this, except we'd be using the angle of theta, if that makes sense. But for our one, two, three sequence, our second rotation is around the second axis, angle of theta. So just like we did up here, we want to find, now we have our B double prime frame, and that's associated with our B prime frame. So this is our second intermediate frame about our first intermediate frame. That makes sense. So we can represent, again, our B1. And see, we also have, we're following the right-hand rule here. So we have B1, B2, B3, follow the right-hand rule. Take B1, B2, B3 is pointing up. Now we have B1, B2, and B3 is pointing to the right. So our B1 double prime frame can be represented as cosine theta b1 prime minus sine theta b3 prime. Our b2 double prime is just our b2 prime. And then our b3 double prime is sine theta b1 prime plus cosine theta b3 prime. And now our final rotation, oh, and then we got our rotation matrix. So now this is b1 prime into or b prime into b double prime that can be represented as this now our third and final rotation is about the third axis so b1 b2 b3 and then it's rotated about an angle of psi so our so now this is our second intermediate frame into our third and final frame which is B triple prime. So B1 triple prime equals cosine psi B1 double prime plus sine psi B2 double prime. B2 triple prime equals negative sine psi B1 double prime plus cosine psi B2 double prime. And then B3 triple prime just equals B3 triple prime. Or B double prime. And that rotation matrix, B3 
b double prime into b triple prime. It can be represented as this rotation matrix. You know, any of these rotation matrices can be used. So let's say I had some coordinates in B1 prime and I wanted to convert them into B or B prime, convert it into B double prime, I could use this rotation matrix and do that. If I had, so yeah, I could do that. So our rotation, full rotation matrix of our first frame into our final frame, so B into B triple prime, can be represented as this. Our B double prime into B triple prime multiplied by the B prime into B double prime multiplied by B prime or B into B double prime or B prime, sorry. And the reason why we have to multiply it these way is because this is the only way that these interior will cancel out. So you see how these are next to each other? So you, you can't multiplying like B prime, B1 prime, R, B multiplied by, let's say, you know, R. This is not a valid multiplication that you can do. So we do it this way. And then this will ultimately give us this here, because these all cancel out. You just have with B, B triple prime. So here's the math here. So I multiplied these two matrices first, and then I multiplied this matrices by this matrix. I'm not gonna go through all the multiplication here. You can see my video on matrix multiplication to see how that works. And so, then, once you multiply all these, you are left with this as your attitude matrix, your full attitude matrix. So given an initial vector, like I just discussed, of a certain initial vector, and we had all these angles given, we could solve what those initial vectors would be in the final frame. So this is the first method to get the attitude matrix, and I'm going to show another one in a second. So here's a second method. Now there's a lot of writing here. So this is why I don't prefer this method. I do prefer this method. It's a lot quicker, a lot less writing, a lot easier, I think. But here's a second method that you can just visualize here. So we want to solve B triple prime as a function of B. So we know what our, so you, it just involves plugging these into this equations, these equations, and then plugging then these values and then into these. So we can find our B double prime as a function of B by plugging in these values. So we have B double prime. I think you can see all this in one frame here. A B double prime equals cosine theta B1 prime minus sine theta B3 prime. So what's B1 prime? Well, it's just B1, so we have cosine theta B1 minus sine theta times B3 prime. What's B3 prime? Well, it's negative sine phi times cosine phi. And then, so you plug that into there, multiply it out, you're left with that. B2 double prime is a little bit simpler because that is just B2 prime, and so you just move these to there. And then B3 double prime, then sine theta b1 plus then plus then cosine theta times b3 prime. Now where it gets a little bit more tricky is now you got your b3 triple prime. So b3 triple prime equals cosine psi times b1 double prime. Now what's our b1 double prime? Well it's this. So that's there plus sine psi times b2 double prime, and then b2 double prime is just this, and then it's there. And then you just multiply everything out, collect like terms, the function of b1, b2, b3, then same thing for b2 triple prime, and b3 triple prime, 
and then ultimately you are just left with your simple attitude matrix right here and that is the same as you would get for this now there's a lot more things we can do with these attitude matrix to find different values like an inverse kinematics or a small angle approximation but we're just for this video we're just going to stick with how to find the attitude matrix so this can be these processes can be done for every single Euler angle combination so it's just kind of tedious but once you have them all in this form they will never change if you're using that same sequence so for a one two three it will always be this depending but you got to make sure you're using the same angle convention because if you do a different angle convention then all these angles will be different and it might not look as clean thank you